What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Johnny K Picks. And in this video, I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions, along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Paris. And that is Moicano versus Saint Denis. Now, first things first, please hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you are new or if you just haven't subscribed yet. Turn on the notifications so you know when we go live on Wednesdays, when we do maybe little watch alongs on Saturdays, all that good stuff. Leave some comments below on what fights you're looking forward to for this card, how you did on your on the last card. I think it was about two weeks ago. So and check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K picks. I put out all my early UFC content, uh, betting cheat sheets, all that good stuff. I also do NFL bets, footy bets too. So if you're into that, check it out. Five ninety nine a month to support that as well. So um yeah, it, it's been a week. Um, so we had a little break. We're not gonna get a new one, a new another break, I should say, until about Thanksgiving, I believe. So we got about 10 or so, eight to ten, I want to say I'm guesstimating. Uh, fight cards in a row so this one's looking pretty good we had 15 but we're down one i think it was volkov um something happened with him so that fight's gonna be pushed back i think so 14 fights looking forward to it um noche was last i'm not gonna go over it since everyone already knows about it. it's been a week so i'll let you know how bad i did though let's go over here so ended up about let's see oh you can't even really see that let me uh fix that real quick for you but um, I ended up going minus seven for uh, about seven units. I don't know if you can see that or not. I, have to, I didn't fix it, but I went down seven units. So not great. I put a lot of stock into Yasmin Howergy and also um, Zell Huber. And as you both, as you guys know, both of them did not end up winning. So it wasn't a good night for me. Um, I did hit a couple bets here and there, but most of them I did lose. So uh minus seven units let's, let's just say on the night there so let's not get too crazy into that not a great night for my picks either five and five there is some crazy stuff going on but it is what it is and that's what that's what mma is all about so i know let's get to it what you're here for which is going to be the picks and predictions for ufc perry so let's scroll down here a bit to the first one and it's gonna be uh Bola, I am going to mess this guy's name up completely. So it is Oki versus uh, Chris Duncan here. Um, let me get to my notes. Man, it's been a week off. I don't even really know what to do, it seems like. But uh, Oki, he's a good striker. He's got good power in his hands. He, he does throw uh, good uh, counters. And, um, you know, he's not really, you know, a grappler by any means. Um, he's going to keep it on the feet. He does have pretty good takedown defense, quick hands. He can slow down a little bit as the fight goes on, like in like late second, third round. Um, he did his UFC debut. He did win. It, it seemed like um, a very, very close fight. Maybe it shouldn't have been, but, um, you know, he looked pretty good in the first round. And then yeah, I think he lost the second and he barely won the third. So Chris Duncan, though, you know, he's a powerful striker. He throws big shots. He does have some wrestling he can use. He can be a little hittable on the feet. He can get a little rocked, but he does have a pretty good uh, recoverability. Um, he does slow down a little bit too, but like I said, he does have some wrestling he can use in this fight. Um, he's going to maybe have a little bit of power advantage and maybe if you want to say in this fight, but I think the technical striking is going to go to Oki. Um, so maybe Duncan does need to mix in some takedowns here and there in this fight. Otherwise I think he might get sniped, but, uh, this is a close fight because like I said, if you see Duncan work in those takedowns, I mean, he might be able to slow down Oki into the later rounds and, um, yeah, I, I'm still going to go with Oki to win, but I'm not very confident, actually. I think Duncan is, could be live for a um, for an upset here. Um, I do think this fight does go over one and a half or maybe even over two and a half. Um, you know, like I said, both guys are pretty good. I can see Oki, you know, clipping Duncan, maybe knocking him out in the first or second round. Or maybe Duncan lands a good shot, too, because he does have power in his hands. He was able to knock out Charlie Campbell after getting rocked about three or three times in that fight. So he does have power. Um, a lot of these fights, you know, he's been close decision there with Omar Morales. Not really the greatest look. Pretty close fight um, there, even though Ashmoos broke his arm. And then he didn't look good at all against Menel Torres. So, you know, it's tough to back both these guys. I'm just going to back the guy that I think is a little bit younger and a little bit more technical on the beat. So give me Oki to win. I'm going to say by decision. Should be a pretty good fight. Next one here we got is going to be, it skipped on me, Nora uh, Cornell versus Jacqueline uh, Cavalcante. We just saw her kind of recently. 
But um, Nora, let me get to my notes. Nora is a good striker. She does have pretty good power in her hands. She's got good elbows, good clinch, um, good knees too. She can wrestle and grapple. Um, she has pretty good scrambles if she gets taken down. She's uh, pretty aggressive. Her takedown defense, though, isn't all that great. But um, I don't think she really has to worry about this that too much for this one because Cavalcante is a good striker. She does have very quick hands, good kicks, good volume. She does like to push forward. Um, she can mix in some takedowns, but she doesn't really do it. She's mainly going to be a striker, keep it on the feet. Um, and then she recently fought, like I said, um, she fought Josie and Nunez about three weeks ago. So she's staying active. She's 27 years old. She's going to be the younger fighter, a little bit of reach advantage too. Um, I don't think she's going to be the stronger of the two, but I do like her striking more. I think she'll land more volume and I think she'll, um, maybe Nora has a little bit power advantage, but I'm going to go with Jacqueline here. Um, I think she gets this one done by decision. I think this fight goes over one and a half or two and a half. Um, so if you want to look at that too. So I'm just going to go with, like I said, with the younger fighter who throws more by him. And it, this could play out a little bit more so like the Nunez fight. I do think Nora is a touch better than Nunez, but not crazy amount. I do think Jacqueline is the better fighter. She is taking this fight on short notice. That's something to think about here too. But she normally does have good cardio, like I said. So Give me Jacqueline to win by decision. Should be a pretty good fight. Next one's going to be Daniel Berez versus Victor Altamirano. And Berez, let's see. Good striking. He does have good counters, good power in his hands. He likes to push forward. Sometimes he can get a little um, too aggressive, if you want to say. He doesn't really have the greatest cardio. He does have pretty solid grappling and takedowns. His takedown defense is just okay. Um but if he is on his back, he's not going to like a fish out of water or anything. But like I said, the main thing with him, though, is he kind of slows down as the fight goes on. Ultimarano, he's a well-rounded guy himself. He does have pretty good striking, um, pretty good wrestling, good takedowns. He does mix in his takedowns very well. We've seen that in a lot of his fights, even though he's losing. Let's be honest, he probably shouldn't have lost this Dos Santos fight, but it was a split decision. Tim Elliott fight was very close as well. And some of these other fights were pretty close, too. And he looked pretty decent in. But, um... Yeah, I'm going to go with the dog here in Victor. I think he's durable enough to survive the first round. I think that's going to be the most dangerous round for him. And then I like his wrestling. I think he can get that get these takedowns on Berez because I don't think his takedown defense is good enough. And I do think Berez is okay with playing jujitsu, if you want to say, off his back. And he might stay down there a little bit more than he probably should. And that's just going to wear on him a little bit. I think as the fight goes on, the takedowns are going to come easier. He's going to control him even more. But on the feet, early... I mean, you just got to watch out for Brez in that KO because he does have that KO uh, power. But like I said, Alta Murano, very durable himself. He has taken a ton of good shots um, in, in his fat, in his last couple fights. And um, let me look real quick before I say, yeah, he's never been knocked out in his career too. So give me Alta Murano the dog here. He's a little bit younger. Um, definitely has more experience in the UFC as well. If you're looking, if you like that as when you're looking at fighters, um, the Jafel fight, like Perez was very close to winning that fight. And then he just got rocked himself. And both these guys came out crazy. So, um, give me Alta Murano. I think he mixes in the wrestling in the first round. And I think he can potentially win a decision or maybe even a late finish. So I like Alta Murano as a dog here. Plus plus one fifteen, plus one ten. Not bad. Look at all. Uh, next one, we got Aylin Perez versus Daria Zelazinskova. Zel I butchered that, but I tried my best. Zelazinskova. Yep. We'll just say Daria, but Aylin, Aylin, or Aylin Perez, as everyone already knows who she is. She's, I mean, she's well-rounded. I would say she's more so a, a wrestler, a grappler. Um, she does have good takedowns, um, especially against the cage. She does have good ground and pound, decent grappling, um, on the feet, you know, she's a little sloppy if you want to say, but she does have power early. But the thing with her though, as the fight goes on, she does slow down. She gets a little sloppy on the feet anyways, but that's when she mixes in the takedown. And, um, if she can get you down, she's going to control you. So, and she is durable. I don't see her fit getting finished in this fight, but Daria, you know, she's a good striker herself. She does like to push forward. She's a little aggressive early on, pretty good in the clinch. Always looking for that KO. But the thing with her, though, is she does not have a great ground game. She doesn't have good takedown defense. She's been taken down numerous times in her last fight against uh, Rendon, which wasn't the greatest look, which Rendon may or may not have won that could have won that fight or should have won that fight, if you want to say. But um, 
yeah, I'm going with Perez here. I think she can get the, that wrestling going. Um, I don't think she'll, you know, get knocked out by Daria by any means. Um, but as the fight goes on, this fight could be a little sloppy. Um, so it could be a little questionable going to the judging scorecard. So you might want to watch out for that. But I do think Perez should be able to win the first two rounds. Um, or maybe if the round three is very close when they're both tired, the last second takedown, that's what steals it. So I think Perez has the option and I think she can, she'll be able to get those takedowns more so than not. So give me Perez to win. I'm going to say by decision again, I don't see a finish in this fight. Both girls are very durable and, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with here. Next one's going to be Taylor. Hold on. There we go. Taylor Laplace, if this didn't go away, versus Vince Morales. And we haven't seen Vince Morales in a while. He's, I think it's about four fights he took um, in the regionals, and he won all of them. So he's, or five fights in the regionals, and he won all of them. So he's looking pretty good, making his little comeback tour here. But Taylor Lapolis, we've seen him a few times in the UFC. Very good striker. His power is pretty okay. Um, he's not really known to be the craziest finisher. Very good takedown defense. Pretty good sub submission defense if it, if he is taken down. And a good get-up game. But very good counter striker as well. Good kicks. Very good kickboxer. Um, also durable too. Morales, solid striking. Decent power. Um, well, if you're looking right here, he's getting Peruvian neckties here. He's getting submissions. It looks like he's working on his grappling. Good KO. So, yeah, he's gotten three submissions as of late. But, um... I, I was going to say he's really not known to be a grappler or wrestler in the UFC, but it looks like he's doing pretty good in the regionals. So he might have to mix in some wrestling here. Um, but he does like to push forward. He doesn't check leg kicks at all. That's something um, I remember from the, his uh, last UFC fight, which I am drawing a blank who it was. It was Miles Johns and Jonathan Martinez. Both those guys were able to land uh, pretty decent leg kicks on him without checking. Um, but yeah, he does slow down a little bit as the fight goes on. But, you know, like I said, he's fought five times since the last time we've seen him. So maybe he's improved a little bit. Maybe he's working on some stuff. But even then, I'm going with Taylor. I just think he's just the better fighter. There's a reason why um, the UFC didn't want Morales back and he had to work his way back up. Taylor is very good. Um, you know, he lost to Basharat because he was able, he was out grappled. I don't think Vince Morales is nowhere near Basharat's grappling. And uh, Taylor looked very good against Cody Stamen, which I do think Cody Stamen is a little bit better than uh, Vince Morales, too. So I think this is a pretty easy pick here. So Taylor to win, I'm going to say by decision, because like I said, Vince Morales is pretty tough. Um, he took all those leg kicks. He's only been knocked out once, and I think it was a while ago. I don't even remember who it was. Um, it's It was a long time ago. Don't even know who it was. Looking, looking, looking. Leg kicks by Chris Gutierrez, um, twenty twenty. I remember that too. So yeah, he fought two of the best leg kickers in the UFC, and he does not check leg kicks. There you go. So give me Taylor Lapolis to win by decision. Next one is going to be Ludovic Klein versus Roosevelt Roberts, and Ludovic Klein also a very good kickboxer himself. He is well rounded though. He does have good wrestling, good grappling, good good high kicks, good power in his hands. Um, like I said, he has been using that wrestling and grappling as of late. He's showing it off a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's the only thing that, you know, he can slow down in some of his fights, but not really at the lightweight division. He's looking better. I think it's helping his cardio because he was a featherweight. And um, the other thing, too, sometimes he can get cracked. But I mean, he's very sound. He's very good everywhere. And um, I think he's pretty decent. And Roosevelt Roberts, you know, I mean, he's a pretty decent guy himself he does have good striking he's gonna be taller and longer so he will be the long the taller fighter in this one and bigger guy but um he's not all that crazy i mean he's a decent striker decent grappling it just he's a journeyman if you want to say but um i think this is going to be another klein um win here uh, i could see a finish i can see a decision as well i like him to win maybe even by some like like a ko so um, I'm going to go with the KO. I think it's going to be a later in the fight, maybe the second or third round KO. Um, but I can also see Klein mixing in some wrestling. Maybe he tries to work on, maybe he's been working on his grappling. Maybe he gets a submission here too. You know, um, just Roosevelt Roberts right now. Like he was one of those guys too. that had to go back to the regionals and win a couple. And now he's back in it too. And he had, took a fight on short notice and was able to get, 
you know, lost to arm bargains for Besky, but he's a, he's a beast. But I mean, Klein's a beast in his own way as well. So I think this is just going to be another unfortunate loss for Roberts here. So give me Klein to win. I'm going to say like second or third round knockout. I think the striking is going to be um, way different. And even if the Klein can't get his striking going for whatever reason, he's got that wrestling and grappling to fall back on. And another one we got is Umar or Umar Sai versus Da Woon Jung. And both these guys are pretty big guys, both 6'4", 83 inch reach, 78 and a half inch reach. But Sai is an explosive striker. He does have KO power. He can grapple. We saw in his last fight three months ago, he was able to get the rear naked choke. But he is more so a kickboxer striker. He has a pretty good cardio. He does push forward. And um, very technical. Like I said, Daun, uh, Daun, very good striker himself. He does have good boxing. Um, he can mix in some wrestling and takedown. He is a, kind of a slow starter, but he is coming in um, you know, on a three-fight losing streak, and each fight is not looking that great. Um, you know, he's 30 years old, so it's not like he's out like washed or anything. He's just on a little rut here. And I think he's gonna have some trouble in this fight, too, because you know, Sai's pretty good. I mean, the one thing you could say about Sai, though, he just really hasn't had the UFC competition. This is probably going to be his um, uh, toughest competition in the UFC for sure, because he just fought this guy who's not UFC competition in the UFC. But again, like, I don't, I, you know, I got to go with Sai here. I, I like his striking. I think he's, he can be able to land on Jung. We've seen Jung get knocked out by Dustin Jacoby, who doesn't knock out anybody really. Um, that's just not a bit good loss at all. And then Olberg, you know, Olberg's Olberg. So he's he's a dangerous striker as well, but so is Sai. And um, maybe Sai does try to mix in some wrestling and grappling. The only thing I would say is Jung, Jung should probably try to wrestle early and drag this fight later and see what happens. Because, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't want to stand on the feet with this guy. He does have good kicks, like I said. And, and, da, and Jung is more so just like a boxer guy. So give me Sai to win. I'm going to say either first or second round KO. I think he does land on that chin, and I think he does get him out of there. And who knows? Maybe he does go for some takedowns because Jung, you know, we haven't really seen him get taken down too much. Light, light heavyweight division doesn't really have too many grapplers or wrestlers. So, but, I mean, I could see Sai trying for some takedowns. The same thing with Jung. I think they both should, to be honest. But Sai is going to be the better striker, I think, on the feet. So, first or second round knockout for Sai for me. And we got the feature prelim. It's going to be Ian Kutalaba versus Ivan Ursulan. And he's making his UFC debut. But Kutalaba, we know of him very well. Very, very killer be killed fighter. Very aggressive early. Um, has power in his hands. Wild. Not very technical. He does have good takedowns. But he doesn't have great control time. He can get submitted very easily. He can get knocked out pretty easily. Um, he does slow down a little bit as the fight goes on, but he's very dangerous early. And um, yeah, I'm surprised the last fight six months ago against Philip Linz, he was able to last all three rounds because he hasn't done that in a very, very, very long time. He usually either gets a finish early or gets finished early. But Ivan, you know, he like I said, making his UFC debut, he's a very powerful striker. He likes to push forward. Um, the only bad thing about him is he doesn't really have the best ground game, whether it's offensively or defensively. So if he does get taken down hard for him to get back up and, um, he doesn't really go for any offensive takedowns either. He's going to be a striker. He wants to go in there and he wants to knock your head off. So that's basically what Kutalaba does too. He wants to go in there and he wants to knock your head off. But the thing with Kutalaba though, he does have that wrestling in his back pocket. So he can get some wrestling going maybe early. But I don't trust him. That's the thing. I don't trust Kutalaba as far as I can throw him. I don't think I... The last time I picked Kutalaba in a fight, honestly, let me look back. Yeah, I haven't picked Kutalaba in any of these fights, and I did lose on this one. I picked Tanner Bozer, but I picked against him in every one of his fights, and I'm going to keep that um, streak alive. I'm going to go with this guy, Ivan. I think he's going to be able to... Maybe he does get taken down early, but like I said, I don't think Kutalaba's ground control is good enough to keep him down. And even though Ursulan's ground game is not good, but on the feet, he's very dangerous. And I think he'll be able to touch Kutalaba here too. So give me 
Ursulan to win by first or second round knockout. I think he gets it done. He's a slight dog. I like that. I just, this is more so a fade on Kutalaba. I think Ivan can survive and uh, get a finish on Kutalaba, which we've seen time and time and time again. So I'm going to roll with the dog. I just can't trust Kutalaba. It's more of a fade. Let's be honest. And the main card opener, it's Zayam versus Matt Frivola here. And um, Zayam, where are we at solid technical kickboxer you know he doesn't really have the greatest power even though he's a smile killer that's his nickname but he can you know wrestle and grapple at times we've seen him get some takedowns here and there but he is a kickboxer kind of low volume guy he doesn't like doesn't get hit a lot doesn't throw a lot of punches either doesn't really have the greatest power but Frivola is kind of the opposite he is pretty well rounded though but he is an aggressive striker he throws tons of power when he lands he can be a little sloppy sometimes but he is pretty durable. He does have good takedowns in wrestling, but his takedown defense isn't the greatest. But he's going to be stronger than Z- um, Ziam here. Um, he's going to be smaller, but he's going to be more powerful and more dangerous. So to me, it's Ziam by decision or probably Favola by a finish. And Ziam, if I d- am not mistaken, he's only been subbed three times. He's never been KO'd. And Favola doesn't have too many subs on his record he's more so going for the ko but um i'm just gonna go with favola i think he's gonna land the better moments and ha- or have the better moments in this fight uh just Zayam to me like i just think he's more so a decision fighter and he took a very close fight <laughs> for claudio puelas not a good look um jai herbert he did look pretty good in and then michael figlo Figlak, you look pretty good in too, but Vervola, I believe, is a little bit better than all of these guys. Maybe Justin Her- or Jay Herbert is close, but I still think I would pick Frivola. So we'll see what happens here, but I'm going to go with Frivola to win. He, I know he's a slight favorite, but I do think now he might be a slight dog. This fight's probably going to be a pick em. Um He is 34 to 27, so I mean, if you look at the age and you like to pick going off of like that seven year average or difference or whatever. But I think Frivola here is fine. He did get knocked out pretty bad against St. Denis, but it was 10 months ago and St. Denis is a killer. This guy's not a killer. I don't care if it says he's a smile killer. So give me Frivola to win. And I'll say by, I still, you know, what? I think Frivola can win a decision too. So it's not that he's just KO or bust, but give me Frivola. I'm going to say by knockout. I think he can um, get this one done. Next one is going to be Morgan Cherrier versus Gabriel Miranda. And I believe Miranda is also taking this fight on short notice, but Cherrier is a very good boxer or kickboxer. I'm sorry. Good, powerful uh, guy too. He pushes forward. Um, pretty good at range. He's got good. He got some pretty good scrambles. If this fight does get to the mat, he's very good in the clinch. He's tough. He's durable. We've seen a great fight against Chepe Mariscal. And honestly, I think he won that fight. I don't think Chepe won that fight. It was fun. It was close. But in close fights, there are clear winners. And I thought Morgan won that. But it is what it is. But Gabriel, though, he's a very good grappler. uh, Good takedowns with very good submissions early. His striking isn't the greatest. um, And he does slow down as the fight goes on. And like I said, I think he did take this fight on short notice, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, I got to go with Morgan here. I think he's with the way better striker. I think uh, Miranda's only chance here is to get an early submission. If he gets this fight to the mat, which is possible, he could get the fight to the mat. Um, but if he can't, I think Morgan's going to tee off on him and get a KO. So I'm going to go with Morgan to win. I'll say by knockout second round, maybe. Um, but yeah, like I said, Miranda's, I think his first round submission or bust. And I think Morgan is, going to be fine here i know he's got 10 losses it's not a great look but he looked very good in his last fight and against chepe which i like i said i do believe um he won and he's losing a lot of his fights by decision like he's not getting he got submitted once he's not losing by a finish he's just if the fight goes more times than not he's losing but last one i don't think he should have got that one chalked up on him so look at that little run four four wins and he should have five so Give me Morgan to win, like I said, by, uh, I'll go second round knockout. Next one's going to be a pretty good one here. Kevin Josette or Jose versus Brian Battle. Jose, you know, he's a pretty good, uh, well-rounded guy himself. He's got good, uh, good striking, 
good he can wrestle and grapple we've seen in, in a couple of his fights uh who was it it was well Kiefer crosby but he's not that great let's be honest but he did look pretty decent against ken on song um he can be a little hittable on the feet though he does have pretty good cardio and he's durable like i said battle well-rounded guy himself he does have good striking good kicks up the middle he's durable too he does have pretty decent grappling and wrestling he can be taken down pretty easily but um We'll see. We'll see if he improved that. He was looking very good against Angelusa, and then until the accidental eye poke, and then they, he couldn't move, go on. But he was clearly going to win that fight, so he's looking good and good. Ever since he moved down to welterweight, he's been looking very, very good. But this is a pretty good fight, and I'm interested to see what happens here. But I'm going to go with Brian Battle. Um, I like his striking a little bit more. I think he's going to be a little bit more dangerous as well, but. Um, if this fight does get to the mat, I do think um, Battle does have the submissions to back it up to. He he's got a very good rear naked choke, um, but we'll see. I think this is going to be a very close fight. I think it's lined appropriately, but I just favor Battle at this moment at this time. Um, this is going to be a pretty decent step up for Jose as well, and um, I think Brian Battle has been looking really, really good lately. So give me Battle to win. I'm going to say by decision. I think both guys are super tough and durable. And um, I just think battle gets the better of the two better of uh, get two or maybe even three rounds. You never know. So give me battle to win by decision. Next one, it's going to be William Gomez versus Joe Anderson Brito. And Gomez is a, uh, another solid technical kickboxer too. Um, he does, he can wrestle here and there, but he, he's more so a striker doesn't really have the greatest like knockout power or anything. He's not very dangerous. He can be low volume sometimes and he does slow down as the fight goes on as well. Um, but he is a good technical striker and uh, stays, uh, stays at range pretty well too. He likes to stay on the outside. Brito explosive guy on the feet, very dangerous. He's very quick. Um, he's got tons of power. Like I said, he's got good grappling, good submissions, good wrestling as well. Um, he can be taken down, but I don't think Gomez is going to want to take him down. To be honest, he's going to it's going to be night and day on the feet, or I'm sorry, on the mat for him. But um, also, Gomez will be the bigger fighter here. But the more dangerous guys, Brito on the mat and on the feet for sure. And I just think Brito is going to be too quick for Gomez. To be honest, like I think if he wants to, Brito can get in the wrestling and grappling, or if he wants to stay on the um, you know, he can die, he can jump in real quick, get a couple good shots on him and jump back out. And he's got crazy good leg kicks to powerful leg kicks. Brito does. So um, we'll see. I mean, I would, I would want Brito to mix in the wrestling early just to slow down Gomez a little bit. And um, that's where he's going to have the biggest advantage. And I could see him doing that too. I, I mean, I hope he doesn't think that he's the, you know, a way better striker because Gomez is pretty good, but, I'm going to go with Brito here. I think he gets this one done. I'm going to say by submission because I think he can also get a club and sub. And we've seen him get some, a good uh, ninja choke against Jonathan Pierce. And uh, he, like I said, he does have very, very, very good submissions too. So give me Brito to win by, I'll say like second round submission. I don't, th I think the first round will be pretty cool. And um, it'll probably be a little bit back and forth, but Brito will probably have more moments in the first, but I think, Brito will start getting those takedowns later as the fight goes on and uh, eventually get the submission. Cool main here. We got Nazardine Amavov versus Brandon or Brendan all in Allen here. So Amavov, we've seen him last against Jared Cannonier. The I was there live. We kind of thought it was um, a, an early ish stoppage against Jared Cannonier. Um, but, you know, he was looking pretty good in that fight. He's well-rounded, good technical striking. Um, he's, he's got very good one-twos down the middle. He can mix in the wrestling and grappling. Very good wrestler and grappler. Good takedown defense, durable. Um, this is a three-round fight, so his cardio is pretty good for three rounds. Now when he gets into the five-round range, that's when he starts to slow down a little bit more. Um, but we did see in one of his fights, I believe... It wasn't this fight. It might have been the uh, Roman Delice fight, yeah. He kind of went all out in the first couple rounds, and then he was kind of gassed in the third, but he still pulled it off the victory. Um, it should have, it was a little closer than it probably should have been. But Brendan, you know, he's been doing very good as of late. I think he's won like more than five in a row. I can't, I don't remember exactly, but um, well rounded guy, too. I would say he's a better grappler 
with very good submissions, pretty good takedowns too. His striking is pretty good. He does like to push forward, get inside the pocket, and kind of overwhelm his opponents a little bit. But he can be a little hittable at times, but he does have a pretty good chin. I know he's been knocked out a couple times. I think he's been knocked out. Um, Chris Curtis and I think uh, Sean Strickland was able to knock him out as well. But other than that, he's been on a little roll here. He's 28 years old, so he has improved a lot. But, man, this is going to be a close fight and a good fight. And but I think Amalvov's wrestling is going to be able to stop Allen's grappling and wrestling. So on the feet, I do favor Amalvov a little bit more. So I'm going to pick him to win. I'm going to say that this does go to decision and might end up being very close. But I think overall, I think Allen needs to mix in the wrestling and grappling. I just don't know if Amalvov is going to allow him. I think he's got really good takedown defense. And he'll probably use his wrestling to defend those takedowns, too. And I don't think Allen's takedowns are all that great. So I think Amalvov's a pretty strong guy, too. Um, so he should be able to outland Allen on the feet and uh, win a very close decision. So that's my pick and my and my prediction. You can look at the overs in this fight. I don't think anyone's going to get subbed or knocked out. If someone does get knocked out, I do think it's going to be Allen, to be honest. So we'll see what happens with that. But this should be a good fight. And we got the main event here, which is Money uh, Moicano versus Benoit Saint Denis, and both these guys go for it, which is just which is why this fight's going to be great. So Moicano is a very good grappler. He's got very good submissions. His takedowns aren't the greatest, but he does have pretty good trips to get every um, get his opponents down. He can get rocked in the feet. We've seen it a lot of times. Um, his striking, like I said, is pretty good, um, but he does. You know, we've seen him slow down a little bit after but not really as of late um you know he got rocked in the Jalen Turner fight Jalen Turner thought the ref should have stopped it he didn't and then he came back and beat Jalen Turner um you know Drew Dober fight was crazy he's got I don't know how he survived a lot of those punches but he did um but yeah he takes a lot of damage but he's you know he's durable he can take it all he took a lot of damage in the um Dos Anjos fight too for five rounds. He took five. I'm surprised the ref didn't stop that too, but he didn't. And then we got Benoit Saint Denis, who's um, you know he's a crazy guy himself. Very good, uh, powerful, explosive striking. He's got very good submissions too and good jujitsu. Uh, good powerful body kicks. He can be a little hittable as well. We did see, you know, he fought Dustin Poirier, which was a huge step up in competition for him. He did opposed or apparently have staph infection so that's why his cardio looked really bad but he does um you know he does have pretty good cardio i would say for three rounds at least and let's be honest guys like this fight's not going to go for three rounds there's no way one of these guys is going to get a finish because that's who they are money moicano wants the money he's going to go for a finish and benoit Santini always goes for a finish whether he gets hit or not so my pick is going to be saint denis here I just think I like I like him better on the feet. I think he's got the better chin as well. And um, I don't think Moicano's, um, you know, grappling is going to be as much of a advantages in a lot of these fights. So he fought Jalen Turner in, D D Dober. Like, all these guys are mainly strikers. Like, Benoit is a very dangerous striker, and he's also very good on the mat. I can see Benoit even getting some takedowns and just staying on top of Moicano. And Moicano, you know, he might not know how to get get up like from the top pressure and but i can see it on the feet too and i think benoit's gonna land those crazy powerful body kicks and then eventually go up top and maybe land a, a headshot on moicano so more dangerous guy i think is benoit the only little thing is maybe benoit empties the tank and then maybe moicano takes over we've seen it in a few of those fights like that but going with benoit to win I'm going to say by knockout in this first or second round, I think this fight does not even get to the third or uh, doesn't get to the championship rounds for sure. I don't think this fight goes over three rounds for at all. Like both one of these guys are going to get a finish. Let's be honest though. First or second round at KO is the play for me, but that is it boys and girls. That is all 14 fights for UFC Perry. Uh, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button on your way out and don't forget Wednesday night is defend your units me and cody from blood money mma bets we will do our show and give you our picks and bets and go through the chat all that good stuff also saturday it's going to be early start time uh as you see up there it's 12 p.m uh eastern time noon if you want to say so we are going to do a uh fight companion white or watch along however you want to say it so 
we'll have a few guys on watching the fight. So if you want to come and hang out with us, definitely check that out. And yeah, that's all I got for you. So uh, appreciate you, like I said, hanging out with me. And uh, good luck to everybody and their bets, all that good stuff. This should be a pretty good card. It's an early one. Always love early cards. So take care. See you next time. Happy fight night.